Story of the Three Little Pigs by A. Wolf, as told by John Skiska, illustrated by Lane Smith. Everybody knows the story of the Three Little Pigs, or at least they think they do, but I'll let you in on a little secret. Nobody knows the real story because nobody has heard my side of the story. I'm the wolf, Alexander T. Wolf. You can call me Al. I don't know how this whole big bad wolf thing got started. It's all wrong. Maybe it's because of our diet. Hey, it's not my fault. Wolves eat cute little animals like bunnies and sheep and pigs. That's just the way we are. If cheeseburgers were cute, folks would probably think you were big and bad too. But like I was saying, the whole big bad wolf thing is all wrong. The real story is about a sneeze and a cup of sugar. This is the real story. Way back in Once Upon a Time Land, I was making a birthday cake for my dear old granny. I had a terrible sneezing cold. I ran out of sugar. So I walked down the street to ask my neighbor for a cup of sugar. Now this neighbor was a pig, and he wasn't too bright either. And he had built his whole house out of straw. Can you believe it? I mean, who in his right mind would build a house out of straw? So, of course, the minute I knocked on the door, it fell right in. I didn't want to just walk into someone else's house, so I called. Little pig, little pig, are you in? No answer. I just, I was just about to go home without the cup of sugar for my dear old granny's birthday cake. That's when my nose started to itch. I felt a sneeze coming on. Well, I huffed and I snuffed. And I gave a great sneeze. <laughs> And you know what? That whole darn straw house fell down. And right in the middle of the pile of straw was the first little pig, dead as a doornail. He had been home the whole time. It seemed like a shame to leave a perfectly good ham dinner lying there on the straw. So I ate it up. Think of it as a big cheeseburger just lying there. I was feeling better, but I still didn't have my cup of sugar. So I went to the next neighbor's house. This neighbor was the first little pig's brother. He was a little smarter, but not much. He had built his house out of sticks. I rang the bell on the stick house. Nobody answered. I called. Mr. Pig, Mr. Pig, are you in? He yelled back. Go away, wolf. You can't come in. I'm shaving the hands on my chinny chin chin. I had just grabbed the doorknob when I felt another sneeze coming on. I huffed and I snuffed and I tried to cover my mouth, but I sneezed a great sneeze. <laughs> and you're not going to believe it, but this guy's house fell down, just like his brother's. When the dust cleared, there was the second little pig, dead as a doornail, Wolf's Honor. Now you know food will spoil if you just leave it out in the open. So I did the only thing there was to do. I had dinner again. Think of it as a second helping. I was getting awfully full, but my cold was feeling a little better. And I still didn't have that cup of sugar for my dear old granny's birthday cake. So I went to the next house. This guy was the first and second little pig's brother. He must have been the brains of the family. He built his house out of bricks. I knocked on the brick house. No answer. I called. Mr. Pig, Mr. Pig, are you in? And do you know what that rude little porker answered? Get out of here, Wolf! Don't bother me again! Talk about impolite. He probably had a whole sack full of sugar. And he wouldn't give me even one little cup for my dear, sweet, old granny's birthday cake. What a pig! I was just about to go home and maybe make a nice birthday card instead of a cake when I felt my cold coming on. 
I huffed. I snuffed. And I sneezed again. <gasps> then the third little pig yelled, And your old granny can sit on a pin! Now, I am usually a pretty calm fellow, but when somebody talks about my granny like that, I go a little crazy. When the cops drove up, of course, I was trying to break down the pig's door. And the whole time I was huffing and puffing and sneezing and making a real scene. The rest, as they say, is history. The news reporters found out about the two pigs I had for dinner. They figured a sick guy going to borrow a cup of sugar didn't sound very exciting. So they jazzed up the story with all that huff and puff and blow your house down, and they made me the big bad wolf. That's it. The real story. I was framed. But maybe you could loan me a cup of sugar. Now, for this assignment, after you've read your story, you're going to formulate open-ended questions. About 10. Notice, however, that one question can have several sentences and even a few questions. Questions should be grouped thematically. You have another set of examples of open-ended questions regarding the story, I want my hat back. These are open-ended stories, um, pardon, open-ended questions for the story that you just listened to, the true story of the three little pigs. They're intended for children between the ages of approximately five to 10. One, you have probably heard of the story of the three little pigs. What is different about a wolf's story? Two, what are wolves like? What is Alexander T. Wolf like as a wolf? In what ways is he a typical wolf? In what ways is he an unusual wolf? Three, there is an expression, every story has two sides. What is another story that has two sides to it? In this case, there's the journalist's version and the wolf's side. Four, how are the houses different from one pig's house to another in this version? Why does it matter? Five. The wolf seems to think that the first and second little pig are not very smart because they didn't build their houses right. What could be some of the reasons the first pig built his house out of straw and the second pig built his house out of sticks? Why did the third pig build his house out of bricks? Six. For a wolf. Is eating the pigs the same as you eating a cheeseburger? Explain your answer. Seven, what is really motivating the wolf? He says he was looking for sugar for his grandma's cake. Do you believe him? Why or why not? Eight, what are some words you might use to describe the pigs and Alexander T. Wolf? Nine, why would the journalist want to exaggerate the wolf's huffing and puffing? In a wolf's words, they jazzed up the story. Why would they have exaggerated the wolf's tail? 10. A wolf says that he was framed. What does that mean? Was he framed? Why or why not? This concludes the example of reading a story and creating open-ended questions. Remember, you can do this by filming yourself in front of a camera with a book open, you reading, and you talking. I chose to do it as a PowerPoint.